So now we're going to work on Lewis dot structures and molecular geometries. So given a molecule, you should be able to write its Lewis dot structure and also determine its molecular geometry. And these two really go hand in hand because of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or the S. There you go, the S, valence shell electron pair repulsion or the Vesper theory. And basically what this says is that the electrons try to get away from each other. But in order to do that, we need to look at where the electrons are. And as we know about Lewis dot structures, this looks at the number of valence electrons. And we ignore everything else. And that's because the valence electrons are really what's used in bonding. So the first thing we want to do here is determine the number of valence electrons that we have to work with. OK. And looking for carbon, that's in group 4. Carbon brings 4 valence electrons to the party. We have four hydrogens, and each one of those brings one electron to the party. We've got four total of those, so four electrons from that. So overall, total electrons, eight valence electrons to work with. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is set up what this molecule is going to look like. And in order to do that, you need to figure out what the central atom is. We've got multiple atoms going on here. Which one's going to be at the center? Well, it's probably the one that there's only one of. We've got one carbon. That goes in the center. You arrange everything else around it. OK. Then we know that we're going to have bonding electrons. And we might even have non-bonding or lone pair electrons. And we know for each single bond, it's going to take two electrons. For each double bond, it's going to take four electrons. And for each triple bond, it's going to take six electrons. OK. So let's go ahead and look at this. And the next thing we want to do is around the central atom, and we want to fulfill everything's octet, right? So we want to make sure that the central atom has all, at least starting with single bonds. So starting with two electrons between this atom and all the other ones, because we know it's at least singly bonded to each. Then we're going to count up all the electrons and then see how many we have left to work with. So in this example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight electrons already, so actually we're all done. The next thing we want to do is check to make sure that the octet rule is satisfied. And so remember, hydrogen is an exception to the octet rule because it's very close to helium. Helium is its closest noble gas, and that helium only needs two. So this hydrogen has two electrons. It's happy. This has two. This has two. This has two. So all of these hydrogens, they have their octet satisfied, because it only needed two. OK, so now let's check in with our carbon. So remember, this is for covalent bonds. So covalent bonds, the electrons are shared. So every electron in this bond is equally shared between the hydrogen and the carbon. OK, so this carbon, everything in the yellow circle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Carbon needs 8. It has 8, so its octet is satisfied as well. So if we were to draw this, we could replace those two electrons with single lines now. OK. But this isn't really well represented. This is going to take up 3D. 3D space, and actually what's going to happen is these electrons in each of these bonds needs to get as far away from each other as possible. So what ends up happening is the carbon ends up in the center, one sticking straight up. It arranges itself like a pyramid. And then this one's going to come out like that. Um, this big thick line means it's coming closer to you, and then this little dashy line means it's going farther away. OK, so it kind of ends up looking a little bit like a pyramid, if you can imagine that. Let me do the pyramid in green. So there's the base of our pyramid. And then they all come up to a lovely point. OK, and this is a lovely kind of symmetrical design. And as such, um, even though these bonds would be slightly polar, with um, because the carbon's more electronegative than the hydrogen, all of those bond polarities, the slightly positive hydrogen, let me do this in red, and the slightly negative 
carbon, they actually all end up canceling out. So this molecule overall is considered nonpolar. Okay, and that's partially due to its molecular shape, which is known as tetrahedral. So tetra, let me write this out for you. Oops, let me spell it correctly too. Tetrahedral shape. So that's its molecular geometry. And tetra because it has four. One, two, three, four things attached to the central at atom. So tetra means four. And none of those things is a lone pair. 